welcome, and thank you so much for coming. Um, we hope that you guys learned a lot about internet safety. Um, I think the biggest thing is that kids nowadays have such a different um, experience from when we were kids. This is a whole new world, and they learn it faster than we do, and that's the scariest part. So hopefully tonight, um, with all of our guests, you guys will get an idea of what we do at school, some safe things you can use at home. Um, Mrs. Tr or, uh, Mrs. Carter is going to present some safe sites. And if you picked up the handouts, it's a bookmark. Everybody has that. Um, and it, or there are some sites that you can plug in on your computers and things at home. And Mrs. Trumbull is going to present a few uh, monitoring programs that she uses on her computers, and she'll even show you what the reports look like that get mailed to her home. Um, and then we have Officer Zermino here who will talk a lot from the law enforcement perspective. Um, and he's got, I'll just in the brief time I talked to him today, he's got some really good things um, that he wants to share. And then Dr. Parsons will talk quickly about the district policy. So a few housekeeping things. If you have to go to the bathroom, I would suggest using the teacher's lounge. It's much bigger. The toilets are bigger. That's all bad. And, and they don't smell so bad. Um, so they're right through that door. Um, I am videoing it, so if you, um, how, how, not the bathroom part, no, no. Now I'm blushing. No, I'm videoing the presentation. Um, thank you, Officer Germino. <laughs>
email in my inbox that says, no, sorry, I'm going to name a name, it's my kid. So this is the weekly activity report for Aiden Trumbull. And Microsoft sends me an email every week, and it tells me what he did online, where he went, what he searched, and how long he was on, which was a little eye-opening first time. I and that is, that, is the, that is the handout that I wrote at the top for Windows products. Yeah. And the link right underneath this really long link here is how to get on it and sign up for it, which I'll show you that too. But um, so it sends me, so it just says, you know, his most popular websites he visited, visited of course he was on Steam because he was playing a game. And Amazon, Google, Microsoft.com. They'll even tell you if there was any suspicious, suspicious pages he visited. Now I don't know what they they quantify as a suspicious page. We've never had something come up. Um, if you try to get on a page, I block. I can block any site I want. Um, and then down here, it actually gives me his usage. Okay, Monday, this was our holiday. Not this, but Monday. So clearly, we got a lot of computer time. We try to limit it during the week, but obviously, Monday was free day. So, and then down here, it'll tell me again what apps and games he went to, um, and any, anything he downloaded, any download he tried to store. And this he does on his own computer, but the report is sent to me. So I can see it really easily. Then I can also go up here and hit this where it says see more, right there. You can click on that. And I've already logged in, but I'll log out and show you. And this will just be more activity reporting. Um, I can go to his web activity, his PC. I can go time filtering. I can set time limits on the computer where it just turns itself off if, if I feel like he's not listening and just doesn't want to do what I'm telling him to do. Um, game restrictions, if I want to um, decide what rating level games you can get on. There's a whole rating system that you can put in there. Um, game list, I can just spe specify specifically what games are allowed and what games are not and which games are blocked. So there's lots of different ones you can go through here and block and or that you can use. We haven't had a whole lot of problems, but again, you know, our kids are pretty young. I suspect as we get older, I might want to block a few more things. Right now, he's pretty content, you know, playing Minecraft and those kind of things. But he also does like to go on YouTube, and he likes to search for certain things. They like to go on Amazon and search for toys or go on YouTube. Um, it will send me what YouTube um, sites he has gone to. So he likes to look for uh, Attack on Titan videos and, I don't know, weird Minecraft things, which is fine. But then who knows on YouTube what they can search. I like getting the report. And it also is really, it really is an eye-opener for how much time your kids spend on the computer. Because like I said, the first couple times I got it, I thought, oh my God, she's on. And so I felt very bad. Um, <laughs> but you can sign on, and I don't know if I saved the sign-on page. No, that's the same thing. Uh, let me sign out. So if I sign out, this is the page that you'll get. This is the link at the top of the page. So if you have a, a Windows 8 operating system, you can go to the link, you can make your own account, and then put your kid's name in and set it up for your kid's account. And whenever they're on their computers, yours or theirs, it'll let you know what they're doing. Uh, and then there's another sheet that does for Apple products, kind of the same thing. Um, also, I would highly recommend if they have phones or iPads or any of that, that you set up the restrictions on there. There are a lot of easy to do restrictions on the Apple phone. I know my son that's in middle school, I have his set up that he cannot delete anything, any history. Because that's what all the kids do. They go on things and then they just delete their history. Well, if you set it up, they can't delete it. And so you can every, you know, every week, oh, can I just see your phone? You know, let me see what you did there. Because they all have them now and I want him to have one so I can keep in touch with him. But I, but I also don't want him to have one so he can sit there and search whatever he like. And, I've heard some stories, so I don't want to share any stories, but I've heard a lot of stories about kids looking up things on the internet, on their phone. You know, they're sitting there waiting for the bus or they're on their bus. And, you know, if it has Wi-Fi connections, they can get anything, anything off the internet. So you just want to keep an eye out on what they're getting onto. And I really suggest this report thing. Um, <coughs> that's it. So, oh, by the way, the reports look like this when they come. Oh, wrong email. So it just looks like, and I don't have any crazy emails because there's no whole box. It says Microsoft Family Safety right there. And it'll just say weekly report for aid in trouble. And I get several, I've saved a bunch of them just so you know you can see how you get one every week. Okay, and apparently Google is his favorite. He likes to do Google things. <laughs> um, but then it and then if it even says, so he didn't even tells me he didn't use his computer at all that week. I'm sure you I'm sure you use something else. Um, so it's just a great site and you can just delete it when you're done and know that they were safe and they didn't go on anything that you're going to regret later. And that's it. So who's next? Amber? Officer Zermino. Oh. Well, hello. I'm Officer Thomas Zermino. This is my partner, Jake Hunt. Um, we work in the community service.
used to work patrol before we did that. So now what we do is a lot of different types of crime prevention presentations, just like we are here tonight. So you're getting us on a special night. <coughs> now, what I'm going to talk a lot about today is app safety. I know it says internet safety, but really what I want to talk about is apps because the most dangerous tool or weapon that we give our kids today is a smartphone because of all the different things that those things can do. So much more. It's more powerful than, it's more powerful than my gun. Okay? It really is when you think about all the things that are out there. We're going to talk about different apps that your kids are using or possibly using and even that we are, that we're starting to see have really negative effects. Okay? Um, this one is called Wicker. And this is their slogan. Now anyone can send private, anonymous, and encrypted messages in media. So you can send things anonymously and private, not letting anybody know where it's coming from, to another person. If that doesn't scare you, then what we're going to talk about is going to scare you even more. But that is what the market is, is creating these apps for, is to make it anonymous. When we talk about all these apps, that is the real underlying factor is that it can come from no one. These are some apps that are worse for the kids. The first one is called Ask FM. That's what the symbol looks like when it's on the phone. It's a network, it's a social networking app set up in a question and answer form. And it offers complete anonymity and no monitoring whatsoever by the company. You can ask any kind of question. And here's the kinds of questions that kids ask. They ask about sex. They ask about how to commit suicide, how to hurt yourself, how to hurt somebody. But it's not traced back to you, so you can ask these kinds of questions. Um, it has already been involved in a number of serious cyberbullying in both the U.S. and abroad. There's very little ability to control privacy settings. And even if your child blocks someone who's harassing them, that individual can still access their profile and view all the interactions that your child is having on. Okay. The next one, roulette chat. When you hear that term roulette, what do you think about? You think about a gun that you spin and you shoot. So you combine that with chat because this is what it does. It combines the randomness of roulette with spontaneous video chat, meaning you never know who you're going to be paired with or what they might show you. It just throws somebody out there and you start chatting with somebody. Google it and you'll discover that it's not something anyone should be a part of, let alone a child. Okay? The next one is called Dow. Now, this isn't something we see a lot in the elementary level, but this is still one of those things. The slogan for Dow, the anonymous, simple, fun way to find friends who are down for the night. Okay? Operating via connection with Facebook, people can group their friends as just buddies or those that like to get down with for a little fill in the blank. Okay? Those looking, those looking for a getting down can search their friends and see if they can find a match. Okay? And app. The next one, kick. It's an instant message and social networking hybrid. Kids can send basic messages like texting, they can send fault photos, and they can also send files through Kit. Since it's used over the internet, anyone can attempt to contact your child. These apps all run on Wi-Fi. You don't have to have, you don't have, to have um, data to be able to open these up. So if you have a Wi-Fi connection, you can talk with these. Um, it, it allows kids to send private messages that can be very difficult for, print, for parents to access, and they can be very easily deleted. Okay? It's not like a text message that you can say you can't delete or an email that you say you can't delete. Kick is very easily deleted. Since photos are involved, there's considerable opportunity for children to be exposed to inappropriate in images. This one is commonly used for sexting. Okay? Okay, that's what it looks like. The next one is called Omegle. 
O-M-E-G-L-E. Basically chatting with a random stranger either via standard messaging or video. It's kind of like FaceTime. For at risk, the app can connect with a Facebook account, mm -hmm. then will attempt to connect people using the app to find people who have similar likes. So you can send that search out there, I want to talk to somebody else who likes this, and then it connects you with them. Okay? There's nothing to keep kids from being exposed to inappropriate content, and there's ample opportunity for personal information to be shared. When a conversation ends, the chat log can be saved, and then a link will be provided so that this can be shared freely. So you can save your whole conversation, and then you could post it on your Facebook, your Instagram, for everybody else to view your entire conversation. Another app. Some of these you've seen, Snapchat. I'm gonna tell you guys something. Snapchat is probably one of the most horrible apps for a child. Because this is what Snapchat does. It allows kids to send photos that once opened by the recipient disappear after 10 seconds. However, should the recipient grab a screenshot, which you know how to do that with your phone, it is now a permanent image that can be shared with others. Most children won't think about that possibility of them taking a screenshot and are, might be tempted to take, long, take more risks because they think it's not going to exist after 10 seconds. Snapchat has a database. So everything that gets sent, all these apps have databases that you can, you have to get subpoenaed for us to go and do. However, because you can create an anonymous name, and I've dealt with this one where a child has been sent a picture of another person's genitalia. But because they didn't screenshot it, they couldn't prove it, nor could we identify the person that did that to them. It was a 12-year-old child. Okay? That's what Snapchat does. The next one is Tender. You guys ever heard that? It sounds more like an adult thing, doesn't it? Because we hear about it on TV shows. I didn't even know what it was until I... When I heard it on uh, several different churches, I said, what is this Tinder thing? And started looking at it. The flame is a good in indicator that this app is a little too hot for a young audience. It's another hookup facilitator, and anyone using the app can upload their photos and then browse other, others' photos, indicating interest with either a heart or a no way that has a big X. The app will then suggest those nearby who have hearted you and say, hey, I really like you. And then suggest, um, so, and then, uh, and if you like them back, a connection is made, which enables this messaging. So you can think about a lot of ways how this can go back. Boxer is the one with the iPhone looking for the phone looking thing. This app enables you to transform your mobile phone into a walkie. While this sounds like something kind of cool, because I've had an app where my phone was able to do a walk-in, and we all remember the next tell cool stuff. We okay. However, just being, being able to say over and out, they can also exchange photos, texts, and other personal information. So it's not just talking. It's gotten attention, nation, national attention as part of a high-profile cyber bullying case. If you want to use it, just make sure you've got the location services turned off and privacy settings enabled. Okay. Uh, be clear who your child is communicating with when they use this one. The purple one. This one is called Whisper. It just sounds like stuff for kids, doesn't it? Whisper. Secret. Box. Whisper. The tagline for this app is express yourself, share secrets, meet new people. Anonymity is the lure of this social meetup app where names are never used but location can be provided within a one mile radius. Because kids are online when using it, they're open to anyone who wants to try to connect with them. It has picture sharing capabilities, making it an easy outlet for bullying and sexually oriented interaction. The next one is called Yik Yak. Twitter meets texting with an anonymity thrown in. A child can send an anonymous message of up to 200 characters and then, using a GPS, the message can be read by the nearest 500 other people within that radius that are using the app. 
No images with this one, but it still has gained popularity and has become a powerful tool for bullying, as well as sexual content. That last one is called Vine, and it's similar to Snapchat. Okay? It's similar to Snapchat. There's another one that I don't, I don't know if I don't have it up here, but it is called Spoof. And if you have ever heard of Spoof, Google it, S-P-O-O-F. There's other apps that are like it. What Spoof does is it hides apps on your phone. So that if I take an app that I don't want my parents to know that I have, I can put it into my Spoof app, and then when you go on there to check to see what apps they have, you won't see the apps that they're not supposed to have because they're hidden in Spoof. But if you see the Spoof icon, you know that they've hidden some apps because they can password protect it. What does that icon look like? Yes. I have it. Is that the one that says Spoof? I think it was it. Oh, Poof? That's what I mean, Poof, not Spoof. Oh, Poof. Did I skip it? I did skip it. Sorry. Poof. My bad. I, I completely skipped my notes. Um, but it, it, it hides everything, so no, and, and there's not, this one doesn't exist anymore. It's according to the website I was on. Poof doesn't exist, but there's other apps that are just like this, okay? And that's really dangerous when you're trying to manage what your children are using, okay? I don't know if you know this or not, but you can meet somebody via Minecraft. You can meet somebody in Clash of Clans. You can even meet with Words of Friends because they decided to update where now you can randomize pick a friend and play a game with them. These messages aren't recorded. They're kept on a stream. When you close the app, you lose the stream. My daughter met somebody through Clash of Clans who started sending her half-naked pictures from across the world. And she told me he was a trustworthy person because he told me his name and how old he was. And as parents, we all know, unless you see him face to face, you don't know who they are. But that's what our kids think. They think that these things are safe and fun, and it's okay to talk to the people because with Minecraft, you can have other people in your, in, in your mind thing and, and work together, clash of clans, you can make clan friends. And she said, well, it's one of my clan friends. I said, what's his name? And where is he at? Does he go to your school? No, he lives in northeast somewhere. And that's pretty specific. Well, he told me he was 14. <laughs> Maybe I'm 22. I've <laughs> <laughs> got five kids. I'm not 22. <laughs> so, I am not trying to scare you about apps. I'm not trying to say that you should not have these. I'm trying to say that if you are going to have them, you need to manage them. We as parents, how do we prevent it? We talk to our kids and we listen. Sometimes they're going to teach us something. Though my daughter tries to convince me that Snapchat is safe because my 14 year old knows more than I do. We still have to listen to them. We can't just talk at them. You can place restrictions on phones and not in apps. She talked about this, but I, I gave the idea on how to do it with my phone. Here's a typo. You go to settings, general, and restrictions, and you set a passcode. Now, there's been some tips about how to make a passcode. I forgot my daughter's over the weekend because I had to help her update her apps, and I couldn't remember the passcode, and I had nine failed attempts, and I thought the phone's going to lock up, <laughs> which would have been great for me. But, you pick the passcode, and there's been some tips to say to use four-letter words because a kid wouldn't suspect you would use them. So if you kids, don't pay attention to this. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever you pick, make sure you know what it is. Okay, on Android, you go to Settings, Users, and you select Add User and Restricted Profile. Okay, you can take away, just like uh, wherever she was at, she was talking about you. Um, she was talking about how you can limit Safari or their internet. You can limit whether they can delete or purchase apps. You can, you can limit in-app purchases. You can limit everything you want to to the, to the point that the only thing they can do is pick up the phone and call. If that's how bad you want to get. And you have to stay on top of it. Many times as parents, one of the things we do is, that's just not worth the trouble anymore. Well, every time you give that little bit, what happens? 
They take a lot more, don't they? Okay? I'm not the most controlling parent, but I'm a very involved parent. And if you think about it in those sense, not as I'm trying to control you, but I'm trying to be involved. You gain that trust. My daughter does not delete her text messages and allows me to read them. And I wish there weren't kids here, but I would tell you, my daughter had a conversation with a boy that got in the wrong direction. And I read this. And my daughter's response was, I want to talk about something else. I told her I was very proud of her for doing that because she didn't hide that from me. And that makes me trust her that much more because she's not trying to allow me to, you know, she's not trying to push me out of what, what, what she's seeing, what she's experiencing. You have to gain their trust, okay? Use a password that's difficult for them but easy for you. Don't be like me and forget. I, I, I did the same thing on her computer. Um, Windows 8 is great. Because what I did on her computer is at 9.30, it shuts off every night. And it can't come back on until 6 o'clock in the morning. And so when you know that, and I don't have to worry from 9.30 to 6 what she's doing. I just discovered recently that she's been using her Nook to text because her phone comes to me at 9.30 at night. Well, every device that connects to Wi-Fi, you can chat with. You can make phone calls with. You can Skype. You can FaceTime. Think about those things because you're giving these people these tools and they're not being responsible. If you teach them right, gain their trust, it'll be fine. And that only takes like three minutes to do. Oh, it does not. Go on there and set those iPhone restrictions. Mm -hmm. It takes no time at all. It's well worth it. It frustrates my daughter because you know she couldn't update her her, her games. So I, we updated them this weekend. She had nine updates that she had to do. And then when she was done, I said, "Are you done?" She goes, "Yes." I brought it back and put, put it back on. It's easy to do that. If you got to change something, if, she can't even update her software on her phone. You know, you get the iPhone update. She can't do that without me doing something on her phone. So take control, but don't make it overbearing. Make it that gaining of trust. You communicate it that way. You, it, it's, it's, it's received a lot differently. Uh, can I, hear? Yeah. I tell my son text, he texts his friends, and what I tell him is, because he can delete his chat. I mean, I'm sure that he's deleted his chat. But I will randomly go in and say, can I have your phone? And I just go through and read. I don't tell him what day, he never knows when it's going to be, but I will randomly go and check his text messages and read them all. And I know that some people think maybe that's not right, I shouldn't read his text messages. Guess what? I pay for your phone, and you're living in my house, and you know all those things your parents said, but you just don't know who's texting them. And, and here's what I'll tell you: as a parent, your response to how you read those is going to determine how many more times you get to read those. If you and, and, and I'm telling you, it's the hardest thing to read when somebody's saying things to my daughter that I wouldn't say to my wife. But if I took that to her rather than Find the positive she's sharing with me. Because if this is if, if this is what's being shared, I don't really have to try and imagine what isn't being shared. It's probably the worst thing imaginable. But if all I'm seeing are goody goody nice little things, and all of a sudden my 14 year old daughter's pregnant, I miss something. So you have to have that communication. You can't respond in anger. You have to respond as thank you for letting me do that. And if you're, you're going to read things, I mean, remember we're, when we were 14 year old kids, when I was a 14 year old kid, that's not how I communicate. Okay, I remember party lines. Okay? I remember when I had to ask permission to use my phone, and it was a, you know, corded dial phone. Now the kids can talk whenever they want. So you have to, you have to find a way to, to get back behind them, get on their side, and not be against them. When you get against them, they will hide everything, and it gets just, it gets worse. So. And even the sweet stuff, like my had a girl who was texting him who was not saying anything awful, but kept saying he, she loved him. And I was like, okay, first of all, you, you know, they had started texting a week ago. And so I even talked to him about, you know, you're not going to text people and tell you you love them. I said, if you send her a text that says you love her, she can copy your text and send it to 90 of your friends, 
that you have now confessed your love to some random girl. <coughs> so it's not a bad thing that, I mean, it's it be nice. It but still, news. They, they don't realize that what they put on those text messages can be shared with other people, I think. You know, whatever someone sends to, if I send a text message to you, you can copy my text message. To I can screenshot it, too. Yeah. I can screenshot it. And they don't things. realize it's going to go on, and that's how, you know, that's how those things get when, started. When here's what I'll tell you. The reason that she invited me here, how many of you have kids in second grade? How many of you have kids in third or fourth or fifth grade here? Your third, fourth, and fifth graders and your second graders all have met and all have had presentations for me about safety. And when we talk about internet safety, I tell them everything that you send out is recorded. It's not private. Every tweet in history is kept in a database. Even if you try to delete it off your page. Same thing with Facebook. Once it's out there, you can't take it away. The same thing goes with phones. And you, you all may not know this, but your kids have learned this from when you delete something off your phone, unless you have a professional wiping program that costs several thousand dollars, it is not completely wiped. It's still saved on a hard drive on the side of that phone. Now, it takes a little bit more work for somebody who's tech savvy to figure that out, and that is not this guy. But we have guys at the PD that do that. If you tell them, even if you delete it, I can still find it. You're not lying. If you really want to go find it, you can find it. Something else that I'm noticing with my daughter, kids love to give each other nicknames, right? Baby bear, papa bear, mama bear. If that's listed on a phone, who do I, how do I know who that is? If that's their call name, I have no clue who that person is. I tell my daughter, I don't care if you have nicknames, but on their contact, I want their full name. That's, that's invaluable. If something were to happen to her, all I had was her phone because you realize you can get your kid's contact list from your bill. You don't have to have their phone. Have you ever looked at your bill and seen that it said names next to phone numbers instead of just mobile, 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 mobile? It actually says the names because those are people that are saving your contact list. That stuff is all up in the cloud. It's all saved somewhere that you can recover. Talk to your kids about that. I need names, because if something happens to you, and I need to find you, I don't want nicknames, I want real names. Okay? Do you have anything to say about Instagram? Here at school, lots of kids, and my son included, um, have Instagram. Have you, what is your thoughts on Instagram? Here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't like any social media, because I love face-to-face -face interaction. That's why I married my wife. But we're all good with gloom, and everything's on Instagram. <laughs> That's why, because I, I like to see her. I don't like to text her. I don't like to Instagram her. I like that face-to-face -face contact because that's how I grew up. Right. Our kids have grown up in a world where their friends are in cyberspace. There are some healthy things to things like Facebook and Instagram. There are very few for kids. For adults, it's really neat when you're trying to communicate. Like, I don't have a Facebook. I don't have an Instagram because of the fact that I don't need that, okay? My daughter's getting bullied because she doesn't have an Instagram, which do you think, why would somebody get, that's like, I remember I used to get bullied because I wore the wrong kind of shoes, or I wore holy jeans. But it's not about that anymore. It's about what type of social networking you do, because if you don't, then you're not somebody. So to me, those kinds of apps are horrible for kids because it's, it's just like, um, it's just like the, the different shoes, the different pants. It's something else for somebody to find to bully you about. Now, if you manage it, if you set your privacy right, there's some good things for it. But what is the value? Because Instagram is what? Sharing photos, right? And texting? Yeah. What's the value of me sending a picture to him when I'm five feet away? Now he has my photo. Are you gonna take that one picture? <laughs> Isn't that cool? You can't have it, it's mine. That's the kind of interaction that I, I, to ask me how I feel about things that I don't understand or use, I just tell you that that's my opinion. 
I don't like that kind of interaction. Our kids, that's how they, that's how they survive. That's how they live in, in, in school is to be able to social network and communicate without ever having to say a word to someone. The danger behind it is when you get into cyber world. Yeah, do you have a lot of those cases? We do. We do. And a lot of them, one thing I'll say about that is a lot of times we don't have any way to track them. If somebody shows up with an IP address in the main, thinking we can go and find out who it is, no, we can't. And a lot of times we find out they're in Georgia or somewhere. And there's nothing we can do. We can't police the internet. That's why to me, it's bad, because it's nothing I can do to protect somebody. I can't go through cyberspace and take somebody down on the ground and show them how I feel about what they did to my kid. I can scream through a phone or scream at a computer screen. That's it. I'm powerless. So I prefer the in-your-face bullying because at least I know who it is and I can reach out to that person to find out what's going on. But you can't do social media. So, you know, I'm not going to tell you it's the devil, but it's something that I just I don't understand and I don't use because I don't need that kind of communication. I've gotten by this whole 34 years of my life, almost 35, without having to have that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that in 34 more years, if I'm still alive, that I'll still be all right not having a social network or social media. Because I've been able to get to my position where I'm at without it. I've been able to meet my wife and have children with her and, to my, in my eyes, be successful without having those things. But that's my opinion because I'm an adult and I have never had it. Your kids, this is this is how they survive. But what I'll tell you now, and you and some of you that have, have recently entered the job force, what's something they ask you about? They ask you for your Facebook. If you become a cop, we have to give them our passwords so they can look on our accounts. Why in the world would I want somebody to see everything that's private about me? I might as well have just had this at my house, in my bedroom, with my underwear drawer open. Because that's what you invite when you do those social network, is you invite somebody into everything about you, all your secrets. I'm sorry, I'm on a soapbox, I know. It's just, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. And it, because of the fact that there's so many negative things that come from it. Because people say, you don't have a Facebook? Well, you're nobody. Yes, I'm nobody, because I don't have Facebook. You know, my daughter tried to fight with me about getting Instagram. I said, no, you can't prove to me what the benefit of you having an Instagram other than people bullying me because I don't have it. Sorry. People bully me because I'm a cop. So should I stop being a cop? So I'm not saying bullying is life and it's acceptable, but there's people out there that are going to find reasons. I'm not going to give them much rather be in my safe little spot. <laughs> so. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this website. And it's called netsmartskids.org. It's spelled N-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-Z-K-I-D-S.org. It is a free website. I think you have to register for it, but it's created by... Um, It is created <clears throat> it's created by the National Center for um, Exploitation of Children. So it's I think it's yeah. exploited children. Yeah, it's under this. Right under the There you go. The, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. It's called NetMac or the guy who works in our child crimes is going to tell me about this. And what you can do on these things is you can find content to talk to your kids about. It has, and I wish I found, where did the page go? I had a four. You know where it's at? Did it have the digital safety that page? Yeah. <laughs> here, we'll just go here. 
This right here is the 12 where, the where there's different types of programs. These are all things created by this by this center, which is all sponsored by the, the, the Odo, Odo Joe, whatever, the Department of Juvenile Affairs. Parents and guardians, educators, law enforcement teams, tweens, and kids. This is information that has different types of uh, Presentations you can look at, videos, tip sheets, even promotional items, because they all have to have that. But when you click on them, and I don't, I don't have a, a registration with it, so I have to log in and register. But these are different things that they can talk to you about. So if you're wanting to talk to your kid about something, and you don't know how to do it, this is a great site to do it. If you're an educator, if you're a teacher, it's something you can look at and use, and it's free. We love that word as parents, right? Because kids cost money. Especially when you got five of them like me. So that's the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is so that you have this website at your disposal for anything that you want to do. If you ever have any question back, then you, you can always give us a call and ask us about something. Um, you're always going to get a pretty a skewed opinion from me just because of that, what I've had to deal with. You know, I've, I've seen the apps in the worst possible way, and maybe you have some positive experiences with, with, that, that you could share with me, but I'm gonna ignore it anyway, because I'm still not gonna change my mind, but I still want you to understand that I'm not trying to say that all apps are bad. I'm not trying to say that Facebook is bad or Instagram is bad. There's good things to it, but it's very, very powerful and needs to be, it's just like Spider-Man, you know, you yeah. gotta be responsible with it. Spider-Man has great power when he needs to be and not kill anyone. Right. So that's it. Um, what else you need? Do y'all have any questions? I hope not. That really makes someone ask us. Well, I mean, because I didn't deliver on yes, if you get questions, I didn't deliver questions. You might want to also highlight. Uh, PlayStations and Xboxes is also playing live. If you've got it's a good way to you've communicate. Got it to Wi-Fi. If you've got it hooked up, because it takes your action to hook it up to the Wi-Fi, especially if you have a Wi-Fi password. So if you've hooked their device up to Wi-Fi, then yes, they can get on the internet. My kids use it in the living room. They use the Wii to watch Netflix. Because cable is I came in late. We're just, you were talking about Minecraft. Um, this, my son just got it on the computer. And is there a way to safely play it without worrying about like chatting and stuff? Or if, they, if they play offline. <laughs> if they play offline. Yeah, there's a single player and a multiplayer. Just choose single player so they won't like play on a server with anyone. Yeah. If you're playing offline and you're just playing the game <laughs> and not playing with other people. Yeah. Yeah. I just know my kids play they Minecraft. I look at the graphics and I'm like, they're yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah. Like, you want to play that? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Hey, I've got three of my kids running around on the PlayStation. I walked in, I, my eyes hurt. Oh, what are you doing? What happened to the TV? It broke. But yeah, and, and you can do that with, with a lot of these games that are there. If you disable the if you disable the Wi-Fi thing, if you disable the fact that they can get online with it, it's still a fun game. Clash of Clans is a fun game, except that your child can chat behind your back and you don't know about it. Our and kids I, use the Minecraft and Clash of Clans, but they do it with their friends here at school. We now have had instances where they have other kids come in, um, and you can, you can, especially on the Xbox and the PlayStation, it's a, through a speaker so you can hear it, so you can actually usually verify that who they're talking to really is another nine-year-old or another ten-year-old, uh, usually maybe. And, uh, still but also, still disguising yeah. but then, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can tell that they're, they're like I see the worst. They're friends from school. You know their kids' names, and you know who the kids are in their class. So if they, if you want to give them that uh, privilege of playing with their friends from school, you know what those kids' names are in their class. So and you, and you can see that they're coming up and, and that who the kids are that are playing. But they can still have other people get onto the Absolutely. game with them that they haven't invited. And, and there's a stranger there. They can restrict that. And, 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 in, my, and in, my, in my presentation for the kids, I tell them, 
This is how, if you're going to meet somebody strange on the internet that says that you're a good friend. Okay? I'm going to role play here. Hey! Hey! <laughs> it's your friend. <laughs> oh, okay. Which one? Which one? One from school. Okay. Say a random name. Mike. Yeah, yeah, it's Mike. Mm -hmm. How's it going, man? Okay, pretty cool. Yeah. You wanna play? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the, that's what a that's what a predator does when they talk to your kid is they start off with, hey, it's your buddy. Hey, or hey, what's up, bro? Who is this? It's your it's your friend from school. And then you go, oh, is this John? Yeah, it's John. You provide them with a name to use, and now they've become John. What I tell the kids in the presentation is I say, and I've had kids, and I'll tell you, your kids are smart people. Because I ask them, what should I do? And I've had, in every class, I've had somebody or a multiple of people say, ask them which friend, and ask them their name first. If they contacted you, which friend? What is your name? What is your full name? What class are you in? What school do I go to? Because only a person that went in that, into that school and is that friend is going to know that. They might get a little bit offended if you didn't believe them, but they'll understand why. Because I'll tell you something. It's the same scam that they do for our elders. Hey, it's your grandson. Is this John? Yes, it's John, your grandson. I need money. The only difference is is their target. If you let your kids know, this is how you ask. Because when my, you know, just like when my daughter said, this is my friend. Which friend? What's his name? What class is he in? If he's not one of my classes, then he's not your friend. Okay? I've met somebody online when I was younger. We're, we've been friends for over 20 plus years, so I'm not saying that there's not good people you can meet out there. But we talked a lot on the phone, we sent mail. Real mail, <laughs> snail mail, both of our parents met each other, talked to each other, and I've, gone, I've actually gone out and met her, she lives in California. Probably one of the greatest friends I've had that I met online. It's possible, but you have to be responsible in how you do it. I'm not trying to say that all in your mouth. Stop it. Really, it was bad, it was a smartphone. It's so powerful, it is so powerful, you know? When I, when I, 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 I asked I ask every kid, I said, is this a computer? Tell me, is this a computer? It can do everything that a computer can at the touch of my hand. Remember when you were in elementary school, how many computers were in your school? <laughs> Two. <laughs> they were in the basement, and you had to be in the enrichment program to use them. <laughs> you got to use them one hour per week. <laughs> That's a typewriter. Yeah. Okay. It's not so with our kids now. They come home and they know how to get on Friv and Kid Biz and all these other things and these words and you're going, what language are you speaking? You know, just think about those things when you're talking to your kids because you're not going to be able to completely relate, but you might learn something. If you, if you treat it as a learning experience, you really gain that trust and understanding of communication with your kid. I learned a lot about these apps from my kids. You know, I talked to my 14-year-old about things and she was telling me things. But it's nice to have that openness. And so, so box Well, thank you.
sometimes that is not always followed and children will use their cell phones. Um, uh, it's really funny though, <coughs> we usually find out because they use their cell phone in a way that um, lets us know something's going on. For example, one little girl texted her mother in the middle of class and then her mother called me and said, hey, what's going on? I went, well, I don't know, what do you know? And so, um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, our incidences are fewer, but I think it's so important that the, the things that Amber and I deal with are the basis and the groundwork for information that you're, you're going to want to know, especially as your kids get older. I'm looking at these three, uh, of our three of my students sitting here right now, and they probably know, well, there's another one, a lot of them over here. They know more than you do. They know far more than I do. Uh -huh. And I imagine as parents that your children who are using, uh, computers and smartphones and social media, they do know more than we do, you know? Um, and so I always feel like we have this learning curve where we need to catch up. Um, I thought uh, the information that Lisa and Tammy and Officer Zarino presented tonight was excellent. I wrote it down. Um, my children happen to be grown, and I just sit here thinking, Wow, they found enough trouble to get into without the internet. I can't even imagine. But I worry about my grandchildren. And I worry about the children at school and their safety while they're at school. So how does the school deal with, um, I've talked to you about how we deal with the phone issue. That's, that's pretty clear cut. We just say no. And they, you know, they're pretty good about obeying it. If I take up a phone, I keep it until I call a parent, and they have to come get it. And so is it is it the same way in middle school? I I it's supposed to be. They get a couple of they get a couple of warnings, and then we come get it. And the third time they get the first time they get back on their own. The second time they get it back with a parent. The third time they have after school detention, and they get it back. But it also depends on the teacher. Yeah, the teacher. Watch so, over so, them. Yeah.
So it's kind of like it, there's a good and a bad side. And what I think as parents, it's important that we are at least aware enough of some of the dangers so that we can stay at least a step ahead of what our children are doing. Um, the ones that worry Amber and I are when we take up a cell phone and the parent or the child is like, well, I don't know what's on there. Um, our policy is that um, if the child has a phone and I have to take it away because they shouldn't have had it at school, I'm going to call the parent first. I'm not going to, I'm just, it's, that, stuff, that phone is considered personal property. So, um, and that child does not probably own that phone. So unless I have really damning evidence that there has been something horrible happen, I'm not going to search that phone because I don't really have cause to search that phone. But what I will do is I will call the parent and I'll ask the parent to come up and search the phone for me or search the phone with me. Amber and I have done that before. Um, the things that you need to know for elementary is that the amazing amount of, of uh, social media that elementary children are using, even though they're, you know, I think it's still, you're supposed to be 13 to use Facebook, but I I'm just always surprised at how many of our students have Facebook accounts. Um, I know second graders that have Facebook accounts here. Second graders who are what? Seven, Instagram eight? is very popular. Um, so where the school fits in is so the rules on access and using the phone at school, which I think I've explained. But then let's say that your child is being bullied via texting. How does that affect us at school? When it happens over the weekend. When it happens over the weekend. Or if it's at the bus stop. Or let's say, I would hate to think this would happen, but let's say um, your child starts taking inappropriate pictures and sharing them with their friends then where does that, how does the school, what is our involvement? Well, the policy is that um, if it falls under the criteria of bullying, we treat it as cyberbullying. And there's a, I've got a whole policy about how that affects um, and how I deal with it, how I investigate it. And wait, let's stop for just a second. Bullying is not a one-time thing. Someone says a mean thing one time. That's not bullying. Bullying, if it's, it's happening over and over. Right. I think all of us would be charged with being mean to somebody at some point in our lives. Right. All of us. But, uh, what, except for Matt Stengel. <laughs> Everybody else, maybe. Um, but what makes it bullying that we have got to prove in any kind of a school or even law is that it's continually happening over and over and over and over. That is what makes it bullying. The school defines it as any pattern. So a pattern of harassment, intimidation, threatening behavior. Not just a one time, you're ugly and I don't like you. That's not bullying. But if it continues on and on and on, that would fit the definition of bullying. So let's say, I'll just, I usually choose fifth graders because they tend to be the most socially uh, involved, but I'm gonna choose third graders this today. So let's say a group of third grade girls has a spend the night party and they decide that they're going to start texting all the other girls that weren't at the party. And of course, they start saying things like, it just gets meaner and meaner and meaner. Well, that was off school, but what happens is Monday, it comes back into school. And at that point, it then, when once it disrupts instruction or the school climate or there's any physical or mental harm 
then it becomes a school problem. And so we investigate it. And we have a series of steps that we go through to investigate it. So I want you to know that as parents, this has become a real um, talked about uh, practice among the principals at all three levels of, of public education in Norman. Elementary, middle, and high school. We all hear the same thing. We all have the same policies. We all have the same, um, uh, everybody has to go through digital safety training. Uh, all the children do. We do that in August with all the kids. Um, but I am going to look at what officers in Germain have shown us because this is like an hour of digital safety and ours probably isn't an hour of the program that Norman oh, gives us. Yes, right. Yeah. So, so I, I guess my point to you is that the school is involved, the school is aware, but um, there is really the responsibility is not as much at school as it is with the parents. You've, you've just got to be aware of what your child is doing. You can't be hesitant to ask them to show you their phone. You can't um, be hesitant about, oh, this is their privacy. Because I, just after watching his uh, presentation tonight, I, I was I was even a little bit more frightened. Um, I'm one of those people that's older than the officers, or you know, and older older than almost anybody probably in the room. And so I didn't. This whole idea of social media, it's not something I really need in my life, and so I've never become involved in it. I also don't become involved in it because. I feel like that I have a great responsibility as the principal of Washington Elementary about what I might put on Facebook and how it might be perceived. Or, you know, I, I would never want, and I encourage my teachers, don't be friends on Facebook with your students. You know, it's just opening a boundary that I feel personally and it can be argued, but personally, I just feel that it's it's a little, you're just going a little bit too, too much into an area that might not end up being the safest place. Now, a lot of parents are offended when teachers won't be friends with them on Facebook, but if they won't be friends with you, it's because they've heard me say, I wouldn't do it if I were a teacher. It's just a boundary that we need to protect. And that's what from Dr. Sayama too. The yes. superintendent has talked to all the teachers in the district about social media and the responsibility of teachers um, on social media with parents and the community. Not to add to your fear tonight, but um, I attended um, a presentation, all the principals did, that was given by our school's attorney. And some of the facts that he left me with, I feel like it's just kind of, it just brings to life and makes even more critical what Officer Zermino said, just as to how big all of this is. Um, social media is a huge influence. And, in you know, if you consider YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of that, Instagram, things I've never heard of before tonight. It is huge. 47% of Americans have Facebook accounts. And they say that their Facebook account is their number one influencer in how they make decisions. Now, I don't know if that's true for you, but a lot of people get all of their information from Facebook, and they make decisions based on that. Um, YouTube, which Officer Zerbino mentioned, and which I personally think is one of the more dangerous things for our students at school, is because YouTube has so many good things. 
And in the classroom, we will want to show a video clip of something that's educationally pertinent, and we're always afraid of what ad is going to pop up with it. Um, so just um, allowing your child to be on YouTube is kind of a dangerous thing. Um, this statistic said that YouTube is used in the age group 18 to 34 more than cable network is. Um, social media has overtaken the porn industry as the number one web activity. And so the other amazing thing to me was that guess where the majority of pornography on the internet is produced. It's not Russia, it's not Yugoslavia or some unknown country, it's the United States. And so the, the access to it, either willingly or accidentally, is absolutely amazing. Um, and it happens fast. It does. Fast, it's just a one click, and boom, your five-year-old seen it all in 2.5 seconds. Uh, another thing is that if you do have Facebook, uh, or if you have face, your child has Facebook, 25% um, of the Facebook users really don't even have their privacy settings correct or bother to set them correctly. Um, so, what happens if an outside of school event becomes an inside school problem? Um, once it starts to become a school problem, then we, and it affects what's going on during the day or the way the children are interacting with each other, then we have a responsibility to investigate it. One of the things that I think every parent should tell their child is that if you receive if you receive an inappropriate photo and by that a, a sexting photo or just something oh wow look at this I can't believe it I'm sending it on to you you then become if that's if it's actual pornography you're then a distributor of it so we talked about this at school with our faculty. If somebody were to ever send you something that is inappropriate, the, the, the very last thing you want to do is forward it on. You want to just stop, uh, do what is necessary to, to report it to, the, to whomever, but really you don't want to be a part of that chain of distribution. Um, the other thing that is um, that I think is just important is just helping your children understand what is appropriate and what isn't. Amber and I talk about that probably in every meeting we have with students. It's it's always is this appropriate? Is it not appropriate? And um, the uh, the school takes it seriously, but we can't, we don't have the control you as parents do. Our computers have filters on them, but as you know, filters, stuff gets past them. Kids can get past the filters. Kids, kids are smarter than, than, the, than the people who design the filters, I've decided. Um, and every once in a while, something will happen, and then we go, oh, I'm so sorry. And I have to call your mother, me. I have to call your mother and tell her what you saw on the school computer, and I'm really sad about that. <laughs> um, that's not a fun phone call, man. Um, uh, the, I think the, the, uh, that I would probably want to say to you that this attorney said to us is that um, you just have to be aware. You have to be aware. You have to know enough 
you have to take responsibility for your child. You know, your child is not entitled to a smartphone. It's your property. You're allowing that child to use it. And I think if you look at it that way, that computer doesn't belong to them. It really belongs to you. And as an adult, as a parent, that's where you have the responsibility to be aware. And I learned a lot tonight about different websites and about how to, how, I had no idea about that Microsoft website. That was very, that was really interesting that Candy was doing that. I applaud her for that. Um, so, is there, are there questions that you have for Amber and I about what we deal with at school, how the school does handle things? Um, really quick, I sent out a, a, a survey to fourth and fifth grade parents. It's a really quick, you probably got it. Um, so, anyway, there was 35 people that took the survey, um, and I asked them, are they doing anything to monitor their kids? Uh, 10 of them said yes, 24 of them said no. And that's at our school. So, and you know, we're in a great school. Um, so anyway, I thought that was really enlightening. Just out of 35 people that took it, most of them aren't, we're, no parents aren't monitoring it. It's not because we don't want to. I think it's just we don't want to have to. Well, so hopefully tonight you walk away with some tools um, that you can go home tonight and use on your kids' phones or kids' computers. And um, hopefully we just give you some resources that you guys can use. I really applaud Amber for the idea of having this. I applaud you for being here because you are concerned. You want to know more. You want to protect your child. You want to know what's the right thing to do. I promise I had no idea until I looked over some of the material tonight how many of those apps, my goodness, I was just blown away by the what the apps can do. Um, and so I learned tonight. I think I thank you for being here tonight. I hope that we've given you something that will be helpful. Um, if you ever have a question, you can call Amber or I, um, or and we can put you in, in contact with uh, with Officer Zermino. The police are very good with working at working with us when we do have an issue. Um, and Officer Zermino has done, he does lessons all, he was just here today doing a lesson with uh, the second grade maybe. Um, so our kids are very familiar. Do you guys know him from school? No, well, yeah. I was the same grade as him. Yeah, was. and um, so yeah, we can get you in touch with him. And there's a lot of times, if a situation comes up at school, there's been a lot of times that we've called him and said, okay, what should we do? And then he'll guide us in the right direction right. too. So. Because you know, sometimes situations come up and Amber and I both go, oh, I don't know, what do you yeah. think? We'll come, well, let's call and ask. <laughs> we'd rather yeah. be, we'd rather err on the side of safety. Yep. Do you have any questions for us or anything about how we manage internet at school or any way we can help you? Suggestions for things we could do in the future. When you teach, whatever you teach the children about the internet, do you um, address the information superhighway that they're gonna have all this information that they could have access to that potentially they would come across information that isn't quote unquote normal? Like if you think about our, if you lived a, a sheltered childhood, right. that you weren't aware of all these things that kids have access to, all kinds That's of crazy. crazy things that you would never consider explaining to a child. Yeah. But do you warn them ahead of time uh, I mean, yeah. Um, I don't know that in the digital safety presentation we actually say that. Kind yeah, of it's thing. probably not those words. Right. But that's a good point. And of course, what we would say to our pre Kers is quite different than what we would right. say to our fifth payers. Um, yeah, we definitely try to get that point across. And not just in August. I mean, we try to get that point across all year through various things that we do. But, you know, it's one of those that when people at home can say the same thing that people at school, they don't know what we're talking about, um, you know, it's even better. But I think that, well, I forget the website, I think I clicked off of it. 